Hello, everyone. Gather round. Come closer. Let's share some spooky stories. Oh, that sounds fun. Seems legit. Uh, my name's Matt. I'm Ben. I'm Noel, and we're about to do a special episode of our podcast, Stuff They Don't Want You to Know, for you, right here in iHeartLand. Yeah, in our podcast, we talk about all kinds of strange things, right? We even say history is full of unexplained events. And today, we're going to talk about things that go bump in the night. Monsters. Spooky things that can get you. And we're doing so with a major thanks to our partners at State Farm and Intel. Let's dive in. Monsters, cryptids, curses, legends. They're all around the world, mm -hmm. and people think of them during a spooky season, but I think we're all surprised to find that many of these stories are considered to be absolutely true by the people who have experienced them growing up. So we have this huge list of uh, scary things, right? Monsters that go bump in the night that people really believe. Why do monsters go bump? You ever wonder, you think they would make a scarier sound than a bump? I mean, well, a schlup would yeah. be objectively more I don't know. What about, a, what about a tiptoeing monster? That seems like the most horrifying thing. Well, now it's well, you agile. You never hear them coming. Yeah. You never yeah. hear them coming. They're just there. They are quite agile. They're yeah. actually, uh, many monsters, unbeknownst to most, are trained ballet dancers. Yeah. That's a thing that's true. Yep. Oh. Yeah. That's what uh, Monster Academy is about. I don't know. You're talking about Monsters, Inc.? Is Probably, there, I yeah. don't know what Monster Inc. I'm, I'm behind the times. Education and the privatization of it has just been disastrous. For humans and monsters alike. <laughs> That's a good point. But, uh, but, no, to your point, what about... Okay, so if they go bump in the night, that's because people heard weird noises in their houses, but then uh, it might surprise some of us to know that there are a lot of monsters in the modern day that, are, that people genuinely believe in, and some of these monsters, one of them, announces itself, right? Oh, yeah. But, but it's not usually in a house sometimes. One of the best known sightings of this thing mm -hmm. did occur while inside a house. Yeah. Uh, but where it usually happens is inside a rainforest, mm. specifically on the island of Java in Indonesia. Mm. So guys, yeah. I'm just gonna take you there, right? Okay, so take us. Imagine that you're in the middle this dense rainforest. There's there's animals, there's plants Beautiful. everywhere. Mm -hmm. Think about the insect sound. It's so calming. Yeah. Like is, is it nighttime or daytime? Uh let's say it's dusk. So so right okay. as the light is starting to dim, right? Yeah. Imagine you hear this. Oh hmm. Oh hmm. All of a sudden, this thing swoops down from above and it's got huge wings. Yeah. It's coming straight for you. Uh -huh. You see the talons, okay. you see the dark eyes, and you notice the face looks a little bit like a primate, like a monkey or a great ape. What? Ladies and gentlemen, we've just encountered an ahool. It's named after the noise. It is. So this thing, a monster that we're yeah. talking about, yeah, yeah. is something called a cryptid. Guys, why don't you tell everybody what a cryptid is? Oh, a cryptid is an animal that a lot of people believe exists, but has never been proven to exist. So things like the Loch Ness Monster, Bigfoot. Mm -hmm. uh, another thing that I didn't mention yet is it's got gray fur all over its body. So it does. it is more bat or monkey-like looking, just okay. with, if you imagine the bat wings, right? Yeah. Huge bat wings. Yeah, yeah. But claws. bigger than any bat we would ever encounter in the wild, you know, bats sure. are little fellas this is like quite massive now you know it's possible that on this island in indonesia there is a relic population or a you know an offshoot population mm -hmm. of bats that mm -hmm. did evolve and yeah. became much much larger but there are so many stories and they're stories that are handed down by mouth the the verbal stories mm -hmm. that uh, we that know. old oral tradition. The yeah, oral tradition yeah, exactly yeah. and what we've learned on our show stuff they don't want you to know is that the oral tradition becomes a game of telephone often. Excuse then. me. Okay. Oh, yeah, exactly. Well, so so I, I'll i say a story into my phone, then Ben will pick it up. He'll hear not exactly what he wants to hear, but he's going to pick up... Parts of it. He's going to pick up selective yeah. pieces of that story and maybe add his own. Yeah, yeah, I got it. I got it. Hang on, I got a call. Yo. It's huge. Got it. It's like 12 feet in wingspan. Got bat, bat qualities, monkey face, giant yeah. talons. Okay, 110. boom. Right. Spreading that far and wide now. That's no, no. That doesn't necessarily mean that's what's happening with the ahul, right? We just know that that is a mm. natural thing that occurs with with storytelling. Right? Sure, what people have uh, been doing for millennia. It might surprise people to know that Indonesia was 
ground zero for cryptids that were confirmed to exist in the past. So like, it is possible that if you are looking at places to discover an animal that has not been officially discovered yet, uh, then a place like Indonesia would be a, a great location to start. Yeah. So there's another thing that we sometimes talk about, yeah. and that's when an outsider comes into a place, so everything around them is new, right? And they're discovering it for the first time. I hope you could see those air quotes. Uh, and then the stories that are told to them, usually through a translator mm -hmm. uh, of the, an indigenous population, they get morphed and changed in oh, translation. And that's an even more uh, game of telephone situation right? when you're dealing with lore from a culture that's new to you mm -hmm. through a translator. And even with the direct translation, there are things, cultural differences in terms of language, in terms of you know just expressions, for example, that might be completely sure. lost in translation. Mm -hmm. So you're kind of set up to not fail, but to be confused in the first place. Freestyle. Yes. Yeah. Like, so you're talking about like the coelacanth, one yeah. of the ugliest fishes ever. Is that the blobby one? Uh, no, no, and actually that one looks really nice when it's in the ocean. Oh. It loses, Take it out though? It's not enough air pressure. No. Uh, wait, let's go back to this, yeah, this, this guy, this naturalist that yes. encountered this outside. Okay. Because then he, so he wasn't sure what it was, but he knew it had wings and swooped down at him, okay. right? At least yeah. according to the story. Uh -huh. Then he's back uh, where he lives in, in a house of some sort. San Francisco, presumably. That's when he hears the ahul, the big oh, ahul. Sorry. That's his, his, his home where he's staying on this trip. In, uh, in yeah. Java, uh. correct. Uh, he hears it outside, and then he runs outside as fast as he can because he heard that sound again. Yeah. And he tries to chase the thing but he can't find it, it kind of goes away. But again, it looks like a large creature. It's a braver man than I. Chase the thing? What was he, he armed with? To, well, he's a natural. A pencil? So he wouldn't know what the heck a notebook? It was. Just chutzpah, man. It's terrifying. I don't think it's impossible that this thing exists, mm -hmm. but I do think there is a creature or two that could explain what Bartlett saw, the naturalist. Yeah. And then hearing the stories from indigenous people of, and like getting a, a translation a little wrong. Yeah got confused. Mm. I think it's a specific type of owl. There are two owls. An owl? Owl. Because owls, owls Worth it. make Worth those it. make sounds similar to that, but not the same. There's an owl called a spotted wood owl. Mm. Okay. And it sounds like this. Woo! Ha! Ah. Woo! Ha ah. ha! Now imagine there's two of these, okay, or more, okay, up in a tree above you. All we're right. in the same scenario we began with, right? Okay, so let's do the first owl. Ooh, ha! Ah. Now imagine the the first owl you hear utters the ah sound, ah, and then you hear the, the second ooh. And what is it? What does it make? Ooh, ah, ah ooh, ah uh ooh, -huh. guys. I'm telling you, uh -huh. I but, think that's what happened. I don't know for sure. Well, that's just my theory. Okay. Can, I, can I ask though, usually creatures like this and these reports from the indigenous folks, there's some association in culture where they teach a lesson or they represent some mm -hmm. malevolent spirit or something like that. Mm -hmm. What's what's the skinny on that? Like what, what what are these stories or anything that you you encountered in looking into this thing? There are not a lot of stories about, at least that I could find, about it being a malevolent a force of some kind. More like just, a, actual... a natural creature okay. that is out there. And you gotta be, you gotta watch out because it is really creepy looking. And mm -hmm. if it swoops down on you, it's got the talons and uh, it can probably at least injure you. Uh, guys, I forgot to mention this. There are volcanoes. Oh yeah. All over Indonesia, especially mm -hmm. Java. Yeah, and those are proven to exist. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, they're not cryptids. They're real volcanoes. Yeah. Uh, and they are, they can be dangerous, mm -hmm. though not often. Uh, but it does, I think, it creates, I don't know, almost like a place of wonder for anybody who's there. I can just imagine that if you live there and you grew up there, even if it's old hat, right? Yeah. I've lived here forever, whatever, who cares? Sure. If you look out, especially if you're near part of the rainforest, there's magic there. Yeah. Sure. Also, it's enough that could it get into the mind of even the most learned science type to perhaps color their perception of some of the things that they're experiencing. Yeah, perhaps. Well, if you don't have a sense of wonder, what are you doing, you know? But also, uh, uh, yeah, rhetorical question. <laughs> okay, but, okay. but also, there, um, there's a really interesting point. If the ahul is not proven to exist yet, it's more likely to be found now than at any other point because so many humans are moving into the neighborhood, right? Yeah, and it's, the rainforests are being destroyed. Yeah, it's not just Brooklyn getting gentrified. Yeah.
what's next, fellas? We, we're talking about uh, things that go bump or ahu in the night. Mm -hmm. um, there are a few of the things we're talking about that are maybe a little more on the conceptual side. Well, I suggest that we go to something that has fascinated us and that you know the most of, about out of the three of us, which is like, here's the segue, how do you protect yourself against these forces? Right. You know the way. Uh, well, well, you know. I know a way. way. Yeah, it's true. I mean, have you ever, have you ever felt like someone was, was was looking at you? Have you ever gotten a sense that you were being watched, possibly not just observed, but watched malevolently, like with with a sense of of, of jealousy and ill will toward? You're talking about? Yeah. No, those are cool. Those are okay. We're, those are sanctions. You're okay? We're, I think so. Yeah. This right. is an example, okay. right? I don't have to hold my face like that. No, no, you can hold your face, you can hold your face however you want. But right. I, I do feel like there is uh, something to be said about the feeling of being observed mm. and that can be ramped up if you're being observed with malicious intent. Yeah, you can feel the vibe. You feel It's a vibe thing. It is a vibe thing. And this is obviously something that, that, that people throughout history and cultures um, since time immemorial have thought about. The idea of... of somebody wanting what you have mm. and eyeing you, looking at you with uh, a sense of, of jealousy and negativity. Mm. Um, the evil eye. Yeah, that one. I don't know, it could be, it could be both, but, but the idea that that kind of intent can actually act as almost a curse. Oh. And we see this all the time in, in history, um, things repeating themselves, or what we call parallel thinking. Mm -hmm. It's in a lot of different religions, certain mm -hmm. types of deities, types of concepts. There are analogs in various ancient religions and mythologies that are very similar to one another, probably because they sprang forth from a very similar intent or a need to explain a certain thing. Such is the case with the idea of the evil eye. Um, mm. If you look back at, at ancient Greek mythology, you have tales of Gorgons and Medusa yeah. looking at you and with just the gaze of negative kind of mm. energy turning you into stone. But, or, but it makes sense what you're saying because if you look back at ancient times, it's such a reasonable assumption if we receive so much from the outside world via our eyes, then wouldn't it make sense that we would be able to transmit sure. as well. Right? Even, even in comic books and pop culture, you have always the, the power of the eyes is a, is a big kind of recurring theme. The Illuminati, Well, that's, right? yeah, the, the all-seeing eye, um, the, the Illuminati or the, the Freemasons, it's yeah. on the dollar bill, but it translates or it is uh, called often the evil eye. It's confusing though, because the, what is called the evil eye is actually a thing you're supposed to wear or put up in your house to mm. ward off that jealous, covetous kind of gaze that can actually put out bad vibes tantamount to a curse that could actually okay. mess up your success. Wait, wait, I, you know? I get it. I get it. Noel, here's a maybe a modern day example. If you were just coming into life new, the phrase fireman is is confusing it's a weird too, one. right? Well, like, but if you read uh, Fahrenheit 451, right, the they firemen start the they start the fires. But if you didn't know, you, didn't you know. would be like, okay, what exactly? What side of the firefight are these folks yes, on? Yes, and, so and, 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 and are they our friends? You it's know. all about intent, though, you know. Yeah. And I have one of these in my house, and honestly, and this is to to, to kind of get to the last part of this. Yeah. I bought it because I thought it looked cool. So I'm sort of part of the problem <laughs> here, where there's this idea that if something like this becomes so culturally appropriated, that it could lose its its power. Oh. If I enough see. people yeah. just buy these things or display these things on their clothing, it could potentially diminish the returns on what this thing is actually supposed to do. This brings us to the part where we want to hear from you. Have you ever heard of someone encountering an ahu? Have you ever cast an evil eye or protected yourself from one? And do you trust your fan? <laughs> That's a weird one to end on. Yeah, no. You can let us know. Uh, we have a podcast. It's called Stuff They Don't Want You to Know. Um, we have an email address, which is conspiracy at iheartradio.com. You can email us there. Uh, listen to the podcast. Hey, but you know what's most important? 
We wrote a book. Yeah. What? Yeah. Oh boy. Yeah. If you wanted to, you could uh, check it out. You, you don't have to. There's an audiobook version. I'm an audiobook guy myself, but we actually narrate the audiobook. So check it out wherever you get your audiobooks, or if you're more of a page turny type of person, mm -hmm. you can check it out wherever you get fine literary materials. And tell your parents about it. Yeah. They might like it. And if you don't like it, tell your enemies about it. Oh. That's how you get revenge. <laughs> we'll cut to the book. Uh-huh. Yeah. Okay, great. Thank <laughs> you.